Armin and LeVac, 104.5 The Team, 104.5 The Team.com, your home for New York sports. LeVac, as you know, over the last two weeks since the NFL draft, we have young rookie uh, rookie <laughs> players, rookie talent in the NFL signing some fat contracts. Yeah, brand man. new millionaires. Woo! Brand new millionaires. And, uh, you know, you and I, we make a little coin off, off the lotto or at the track. Yeah. We go nuts. I mean, we don't know how to manage that. Yeah, I just blew my derby winnings at the uh, Yankee Stadium already. So, <laughs> Let alone if we were to suddenly uh, make millions upon millions of dollars instant riches in the NFL, which happens all the time. So joining us now is Connie Harrison of KMH Unlimited, LLC, KMHUnlimited.com. She's out of Saratoga. She is the financial operations manager for athletes. And Connie, basically what you do is you have tailored connections and oversight that matter for the financial future for these guys. Connie, thanks for joining us. Why do you do this, Connie? What makes you want to help out these athletes? athletes, these guys that sign these fat contracts straight into the NFL? Well, it, I started my career, I've been surrounded by the investment industry my whole life, and my career literally started when people would come up to me and mention that they had talked to a financial advisor or a bank, and they had no idea what they were talking about, so they just handed them all their money. And it used to infuriate me, because the financial industry and the, the legal industry does not have to be a foreign language. You can cut through that and uh, make it make sense. And it's important. It's people's money that we're talking about. We're not talking about, you know, um, things that, you know, don't really matter. We're talking about their financial futures. So that's why I got into it. And I've had clients for the past 12 years, and somebody mentioned to me that I needed to find a niche. Well, I've been, you know, I've competed in the horse show jumping arena, and I've been surrounded by the thoroughbred industry all of my life, and I thought, well, it kind of makes sense. So I wanted to get in and protect the athletes, and when I started looking at the statistics and what these guys went through and seeing the stories, you know, even their own players are, are getting them involved in Ponzi schemes, and it just, it, it was infuriating to me because it doesn't have to be that way. How much of what you do, Connie, is just literally teaching these guys to, you know, sniff out a wolf, sniff out somebody who's just trying to separate them from their money? Well, it really depends on what they want to do. You know, some people just want a little bit, little bit of an education, and other people want to straight arm it. They don't want to deal with this. They've got more important things to deal with, like their families and their careers. They don't want to do this. They want to know that I have their back, so they want me to do it all um, and just explain to them what's happening. So instead of having three phone calls to make, they just come to me because they know that I'm going to make sense of it and I'm going to have their back because it's my reputation on the line as well. So Connie, how often does a NFL athlete or professional sports athlete go bankrupt? How how often, how much of an occurrence is that in pro sports? Uh, well, it, it depends. In the, in the thoroughbred industry, you know, jockeys can go down in a heartbeat. You know, they're sitting on live animals, and if something happens, their career can be over in a heartbeat. Um, as far as the, the NFL players and the professional sports teams out there, you know, they, they, they go a little nutty when they get all of this money, as you have mentioned, and they want the lifestyle. They want the big glitz. They want to keep up with, you know, it used to be the Joneses next door, and now it's, you know, Fred across the, uh, the uh, scrimmage line. So, you know, they want to keep up. There's a way to balance that so they don't have to worry about three to five years after their career all of a sudden going bankrupt and living under a bridge. I don't want to hear those stories. They've got a tremendous amount of talent and a tremendous amount to offer and offer things to these teams on a multitude of levels. They deserve to have a, a stable income, if you will, and also be able to buy that Maserati if they want to or you know, a charter a plane for all their buddies to go to Vegas, you know, whatever it is. But there's a way to do that and have them not, you know, just blow it. Okay, who is it that, that reaches out to you? Is it the player or the manager or the agent? Because all I can think of is if I just got that money, I don't want, I don't want to be told the right thing to do. I want to head to Vegas. Like, who's well, the one that tells them that, tells them that they need you? Well, it, it, that's part of the intrigue when people come to me. Um, last summer, I had a variety of jockeys coming to me and saying, you know, this is what I'm dealing with. Can you help? So it's, it's, it's the athletes in the thoroughbred industry directly because I see them every morning. I work with them every morning on some level. Um, the agents, 
that's that can be a little dicey. You know, I've dealt with agents for the past 20 years, um, and so there's a little bit of a political dance there because you don't want to step on toes. And I think that when you have a really good agent, the really good agent knows that his job or her job is to take care of that athlete. And they can't be experts at everything. So if an agent has a lot of integrity, okay, he's not going to throw these guys to, you know, Fred down the street who's a friend of their father's that's an attorney or, you know, a CPA that's never done this. They're going to try and, and hunt out the best option because if they keep their players happy and living the lifestyle that they want and protected well into the future, that's, that's more reason for them to stay with that athlete. You know, they don't want to lose their job either, so right. they want to make it the best that they can for their, you know, the athletes that they're representing. So I'm hoping that the agents and the managers, you know, start to reach out and say, you know, this, this girl offers something a little bit different. You know, she's not sending them to the one-stop shop. She's not sending them to somebody that she's been working with for the past 30 years that's kind of, you know, not keeping up or a little bit out of the loop. Because the industry's changed. Right. Connie Harrison, president and founder of KMH Unlimited LLC out of Saratoga. She's the financial operations manager for athletes, helps them manage their money. And Connie, we have Eric Flowers, the first round draft pick for the New York Giants, pick ninth overall. Of course, uh, his contract will be worth millions. And he and his father have decided to read the CBA on their own. And he has stressed to us that they have a lawyer, they have hired a lawyer with them who's going to help them negotiate the terms but they are going to do their own negotiating are, are you surprised in that that's rare isn't it that they would have the confidence in themselves to structure their own contract well it depends on what the father does for a living you know if, if the father is a big ceo of some big company somewhere and has dealt with contracts on a variety of levels up one side and down the other, he's got a little bit more insight as to the lingo is concerned as far as the contracts go. Um, my concern would be that, that the attorney that they hire, and knowing nothing about it, is going to charge them four and five hundred dollars an hour because that's now what the athlete is able to afford, quote unquote. Um, so he's, he's going to He's going to take a little bit of advantage, which is, you know, again, you know, if you know the lingo a little bit and you can cut through the chase and you can make a phone call um, to a third party and say, you know, look, can you take a peek at this? It'll take you 20 minutes. You know, let me know what you think. I, the, the, the ability to go to third parties, whether it's your financial advisor, your CPA, or your attorney, is going to make a big difference because you have another set of eyes. You know, we have that proven set of checks and balances, but it's the lingo. It's, it's all going to depend on if they truly, truly understand what the contracts are actually saying and how protected, which is key, they really are. Now, uh, staying with, you know, with the Giants, they've got uh, their third-round pick this year. His name is Oe Odigazua. He's, uh, he's Nigerian-born, and I'm reading his story today, and, and, and he grew up tough. Like, his father was insane and this, that, and the other thing. How difficult is it from where you're standing to take an athlete like that who gets this big payday after struggling his entire life, not just to, you know, spend money, but to survive, to go, okay, now I know you, you think you made it, but if you sit down with me, I can make it so you make it for the rest of your life on this check. Um, that's where I think that my personal experience in being an athlete comes into play because you do get those great big paydays. And you do want to go a little nutty on it. Um, and, you know, your, his first instinct might be to protect his, the rest of his family. And if that's the case, it's a whole different set of rules and a whole different ball game on how to make sure that he, he and his family are protected now and into the future. So it, it's, uh, it's all going to depend on how he looks at it and what the goals are that he wants to accomplish. Is it just for him? Or is it for his family as well? Now, you know, the last thing you want to do is say, you know, I realize that you ate peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for dinner for the past four years of your life, and you have all this money, and now I want you to eat macaroni and cheese with hot dogs. That's not going to happen. You know, part of it is, is allowing them to live the lifestyle that they want 
and to be able to do what they want. But if you manage it right in all levels, they're going to have that extra money. So when I, somebody picks up the phone, you know, if I worked with him and he picked up the phone and said, you know, Con, I saw this great, this, this, this great condo. It's right on the beach. It's down at South Beach. I want to do it. You know, how do we make this happen? Then I go back and figure out how we make it happen. So no is not a word that I like to use ever. It's how. How do we do this? How do we get this done? How do we make sure that you can go a little nutty and still be protected? All right. Now, our producer, uh, we call him Gaz. He hit the superfecta on the Derby, cashed in for uh, just over 600 bucks. What do we do with this kid? Do we make him invested or do we let him run wild? What do you think? Uh, <laughs> well, as the financial advisor side of me <laughs> would say, take out what you bet and do whatever the heck you want with the rest. All right. Uh, it's only so twenty five bucks. Go back, you know, uh, and and let the rest ride. If he wants to bet the preakness and rock and roll with that, you know, God love him. Um, but take the initial money out so you're not in a negative. All right. Now, as he he bet this and he didn't tell us what he was betting, so should we take some of that money out before he gets to spend it? <laughs> right. There's got to be a fee for that, right, Connie? <laughs> well, you know, and it depends. Did you guys go with him? You know, to watch these races, did you have the conversation? Did you, you know, I mean, there's consulting fees. When we hired, I, I have no problem with consulting fees whatsoever. Well, Connie, when we hired him, he made a big deal about all he knew about horses and how valuable that was going to be to us on the show and everything. So I think for him to ha- to know what the super effect it was going to be and not say to us, "Hey, guys, you should bet this." I think we're I think we get a taste. Well, and I think that that's a breach. So oh, I, I like think you go back to the table and restart your contract negotiations because you know if that's part of the deal. And he didn't do it. You know, there's grounds there. You know. Ah. I like it. <laughs> Weekly guest, Connie Harrison yes. with Arvin and Levesque. She's good. So, uh, guys, you heard that. That's a 50% fee to Armin and Levesque that Connie wait, wait, said. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. And if I'm going to give you that advice, I want a piece of that, just so you know. Oh, all right. All right. So yeah. we can, we're, we're fine with 2020-10. We can make that work. I don't know what you're uh, talking about. Connie, you're breaking up. <laughs> Connie Harrison. I don't know. I'm going to have to go back to my drawing board if that's the deal that I'm cutting. Then I'm not doing anybody any good if that's the deal that I'm cutting with you guys. Connie Harrison, President. President and founder KMH Unlimited LLC. She helps athletes with their fat contracts that they sign out when they get into the NFL and other uh, sports professions as well. Connie, thanks so much for your time today. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. You guys have a great day.